guys, my name is Jeff. I'm a contributor at DirtyShirt.info. Uh, today we are going to change the impeller on a 150 horsepower Mercury outboard engine. Uh, the engine is actually carbureted if that matters. Just thought I'd mention it. Uh, so we're going to get into it. A couple things I'm going to do first is disconnect the battery. We're going to pull the prop and drain the um, lower unit oil. So the oil in the lower unit here, um, we're just doing this as a maintenance item. Uh, it shouldn't have to necessarily do this in order to actually change out the impeller. And there are two. One is an upper vent hole. The other one is the actual drain hole. It's got about a quart of fluid in it. See the difference too. This one's got a looks like a magnet on it. Upper vent hole doesn't have that. Got five nuts to remove. There are two right here, and then there are three up in the front, and they're all 16 millimeters. So we'll go ahead and remove these first. This fin compensates for the rotation of the engine when the boat is being driven and it has a bolt that runs through here so this assembly here is going to come off and you can see where it has this older um, silicone bead on it. Uh, so that comes out and I want you to pay attention here uh, just a little bit because this is actually offset. It's actually been rotated a little bit and that's its normal operating position. You can see there's a little notch here. You can see the edge of this fin doesn't match up so we're going to make sure that we line this up exactly the way it is because it needs to be offset to compensate for the engine come to find out that the bolt is uh that's holding this together is half inch everything has been metric up to this point and uh, it has to be perfect right because this hole is very restrictive so you, you have to have exactly the right size socket and then everything starts to come apart this compensation's Fin, there's actually another bolt up inside here and uh, we've been studying this for a little bit and trying to get a hold of this and this thing is also uh, American 9 16 so it has a standard socket and we're anticipating that when I take this off this whole unit is coming out so let's see I hate it when I take all the bolts apart and it doesn't come apart right On both sides, there's this stud sticking up out of the lower unit, and then there's this nut on top. And you look at this and you wonder to yourself, like, why in the heck would they do that? Because that's going to be really hard to get off. It's going to be really hard to get on. Well, we've been struggling to get the lower unit to separate. And this is a separation point right in here where all this goop is located. Um, what we reasoned out was that if we keep loosening the nut, it pushes up against this piece, which pushes down on the stud, and we're in the process right now of easing this in, and we can actually hear it now changing. It was just so tight, there was just no way we were going to get this to separate without giving it some kind of mechanical force like this. Um, so we're going back and forth on either side to get it to come off even, and we can hear it changing. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So what we did was we continued to apply pressure by loosening this nut to put that pressure downward on the lower unit, and what we were seeing was is that it started to break the connection here, but back here was still really, really tight. I was terrified that it would actually break right through the aluminum. Um, I was really scared. My heart is kind of pounding and so forth. It was really stuck on there. Um, so back and forth on either end, on either side, continuing to put the pressure on this nut on both sides, and we could hear it, we could see it, but it was still at an angle until finally I took a wide blade old chisel that I use for all kinds of different stuff and just sort of easily worked it in there and then finally it broke loose. So now it's removed the unit. <clears throat> I 
Nice. The kit that I bought comes with the impeller itself, which is going to go underneath this uh, cap on the water pump. And then it also comes with a whole litany of additional parts. And if you want to come over to the website to get uh, some more information with regards to still shots that we've taken, I welcome you to do that. Uh, so right now we're going to take this cover off the water pump and start to disassemble. See this little metal piece fell out. Here's the uh, impeller. The replacement kit comes with this keyway and it sits flat on the shaft like this then it matches to a slot that's in the impeller itself. So it has to go on like that when we go to reassemble. As soon as I started to remove the, the uh, gasket material, you know, obviously this one broke um, immediately. And then this one was on pretty tight and I had to work that one off. Of course, the kit comes with all the replacements. We've always already seen that. And now we've got this one underneath here. My guess is this is going to tear as soon as I try and get this off because it's, it's really on there tight. You can see it bending up. Yep, that one broke right there. This broke here. Just the way it is. It's old. It's got a lot of water around it and it just gets tight. Actually, get some tools to help me get this thing out of here. I want to make sure you get these gaskets oriented correctly um, and we really paid a lot of attention to that so let's point the camera down here and you can stop the video if you need to to get the orientation correct so there's the first uh, soft gasket then this metal one this is the new one this is the old this little tab that sticks up needs to go on like that okay and it slides over and we put the last material gasket on is next. Okay, a little bit of soapy water uh, helped get this in. It's, it's a bit of a struggle, but you know, you just kind of keep working it little by little, but soapy water really helped get it uh, down inside the, uh, the pump itself. Um, and then uh, now what we're going to do, we did, we were not sure exactly about the orientation. We had to go back and look at our own video and our own stills to figure that out. So, you know, that's how it looks uh, when it's been assembled into the pump. So this is ready to go back on. What I did was I, I marked where the key slot is in the impeller itself. So that when I slide this over the shaft, I'm going to know where that's, that is. You can't see that when it's actually on the shaft. So what, you, you're going to need that when it comes all the way down here to home so that you can get everything to line up. So let's try it out and see what happens. All right, we've got the lower unit um, in place and what we believe with everything connected properly. Um, the reason why you may or may not find the lower unit going in on video is because it is a bitch to do. Um, there are a lot of pieces and parts that have to line up. One is that center shaft, right? So what we did is we rotated the engine with a socket um, up at the top um, to get that to line up. Then there's the gear shifter uh, that needs to line up as well. Uh, that really gave us a lot of problems. We couldn't really confirm that it had been done properly. Um, so we did a lot of checking and you know fitting and so forth. Um, we're reasonably confident that we have that together now. So now what I'm doing is um, I'm putting the, uh, the sealer on and uh, we don't dare take this thing apart again because it was so hard to get, uh, get together. 
Um, so, you know, it is what it is, uh, but we did do this in about 30 minutes or so. Um, but shooting video is just nearly impossible on this particular thing. So now that we've got the sealer in, we're going to start to bolt it up and get it to pull forward right up inside the engine uh, and, and start it up and see if it works. Okay, we've uh, run water to the engine. We're getting ready to start it up for the first time actually this year. In addition to the fact that we just replaced the uh, impeller and put the lower unit on. So here we go. <laughs> Thanks for watching.